Hi everyone and welcome to uh, part two of this three-part installment uh, on Joachim and Marcus's uh, group build on heavy armor. Uh, if you're not aware of these guys, please go check out their sites. The uh, links are in the description below. Now in this video, we're going to be looking at uh, the acrylic work on my uh, entry, which is the Jag Panther by Trumpeter in 170 second scale. And as you can see here, I laid down the primer uh, using Tamiya Red Oxide and also the uh, hobby boss uh, gray was then applied uh, onto the barrel and not forgetting the uh, small parts as well um, it's all detail painted up with the primer now i then used uh, vallejo uh, dunkel gelb um, i don't know about you guys but i always struggle with the lighter colors the reds the oranges and the yellows so i just lay down a, a thin coat first let that dry fully and then as you can see i then lay down a second coat and that gives you the uh, full coverage now i'm going to be doing a camouflage pattern so a quick pro tip is if you add on a layer of hairspray before you do the camo pattern if there's any mistakes or spillages they're quite easy to remove once dry so using my reference material uh, i got some tamiya tape and made some uh, strips from the tape um, which i'll be then adding on to the uh, dunkel gelb as you can see here obviously i only had uh, one side as a reference in the book so the rest of it was sort of uh, made up uh, based on uh, the uh, one panel that i had to choose from and all in all not too bad at all uh, really pleased with how that went and as you can see the uh, barrels being covered up as well Now the second coat that went on was the olive green again in uh, Vallejo acrylics. Um, just try to airbrush within the um, gap, no problem there at all. If there are any spillages, uh, there's not an issue at this stage because the next colour, which is the uh, red brown, will cover any of that up. And then just leave that to dry. Um, once fully dry, it's just a matter of taking off all of the Tamiya tape. And there, as you can see, uh, that leaves us with this nice camo pattern. Um, all in all, not too bad at all. I was really pleased with how it turned out. There were a couple of little areas uh, where a little bit of touching up uh, had to be done. Um, but uh, on the whole, a very nice pattern. Now, if you remember, I did the um, hairspray uh, initially. So with this little spillage here, what I can do is just get some water and then just very gently take out those particular lines and that saves you having to touch up with the paint then and then while you're at it if you want to uh, you can go around and do a little bit of chipping here and there um, to add a bit more uh, weathering uh, on the uh, model now these were the actual paints that I used uh, I am in the process of moving over to Hobby Boss Aqueous because uh, I'm very impressed with, with the paint but unfortunately due to uh, stocks and also limited colors I'm still having to use uh, Vallejo as well but they do work together quite well now the medium brown that was used uh, to pull on the um, resin tracks and that all uh, is ready now for uh, weathering now what i want to do is just do a little bit of detail around the um, de well, detail painting of the uh, smaller pieces uh, we'll look at doing the tires um, and the exhausts and i'll just get a, um, a dish uh, using different types of vallejo acrylics and what we'll do is the wet on wet method um, where we apply wet paint on wet, wet and blend it all in uh, to create some really nice effects. Now the brushes that I use are from uh, Rosemary & Co. Uh, these are round brushes zeros and twos. Also have some papers and a little bowl of uh, ordinary water there. So this is uh, the exhaust one of the smaller details that we'll be looking at and then just using uh, one or two uh, thin layers uh, more like a wash just lay down the uh, basic color uh, in this case the red brown and then uh, we'll add on some dark rust I'm actually going from dark to light I don't know why everything else I always go from light to dark but for whatever reason with my exhaust I like to go from dark to light so while that's still wet, we'll then add on a, a, a rust color. And we'll just add a few little splodges there, clean the uh, brush off. And then while the, it's, the surface is still wet, we'll just blend that all in. 
as you can see there and we move on to the next color which is the yellow rust and exactly the same principle again just add a few splodges here and there clean off the brush and then blend it in and as you can see we're slowly building up those layers and then finally in the joints and on the edges we'll add some orange rust and then once that was done a uh, final touch was just to add a, a little bit of black around the top of the exhausts um, as you can see there to give a bit of rust now what you need to do is let that dry either with a hairdryer or just naturally and then a very light wash of Vallejo smoke that will be finally applied and then that gives you that lovely rich finish on the exhaust And there we have it all nice and dried really pleased with how those came out and obviously repeat the process on the other exhausts as well quick pro tip um, when doing wheels um, if you do a very light wash um, and using capillary action let the uh, paint go into the actual rim of the groove um, that makes life a lot easier dry that off and then come back and actually paint the tires themselves and then that saves any overspill uh, when doing uh, the actual painting of tires uh, the decals as you can see completely fell apart um, I bought this kit at a flea market a few years ago it was probably pretty old then um, so I went into the spares drawer and uh, got some other decals and use those instead and they were even worse uh, the silvering is probably the worst I've ever seen um, so what that had all dried in solid so what I had to do was to uh, get some sanding sticks and very gently sand off those uh, decals so as you can see there a little bit of damage but nothing major they're going to get covered up with the uh, sheets later anyway uh, so this a German tank has no German signature on it at all but not to worry it's not a problem for me um, as I uh, take you around the actual tank itself you can see all of the other detail painting that I've done put the exhaust on the back and done all the tools these are just basic colors uh, this will all be improved uh, with the oil work later on again a little bit of damage on this side but I really wasn't worried about it at all I think it added a little bit of character to the build so really pleased overall how the uh, acrylic work uh, was going so far so that was the main body uh, the wheels themselves uh, they they had uh, the three different colors as well uh, the little jack at the back uh, that was a real pain in the backside uh, that's quite a small little piece to do uh, those are p brackets at the bottom and at the top uh, they were painted green and uh, dunkle gelb then we have the wheels and the side panels as well I don't do any of the silver work until uh, later on in the in the build now I'm going to put a winter whitewash on this one so using the uh, hobby Acreus if you want big chunky chips then dilute it with water if you want thin easier chips then uh, thin it with the thinner so very light coat uh, was put on I'm trying to give the impression that it's all worn away um, during the winter months and that's the reason why they're going to be having sheets on there later for the uh, additional camouflage the back wheels the inner ones weren't touched at all i just put the winter whitewash on the outside wheels um, and again this is very thin coats um, so when you come to uh, take it off because obviously this is uh, the hairspray chipping technique uh, it's going to come off very easily um, so be gentle first of all uh, with the rims i took off the white as you can see there and then if you just keep applying water taking off the excess and then very gently going around and doing your chipping work and then once you've completed the chipping work uh, use your blending brush uh, just to take off any of the excess now when you do take off the excess you, you may well get quite a lot more chips coming off that you want so be very careful if it is too much then just leave it be
and really use your uh, reference material uh, to show where the uh, wear and tear would be uh, on the wheels. But I was very pleased with how that all came out and uh, here are some stills of the other tyres and wheels as well. And then we uh, made a start on the uh, side panels. Um, used a couple of little different techniques here. Uh, this one uh, I was going for the uh, horizontal scratches, so more of the uh, that downward uh, motion. Again, being very careful. As far as the um, aqueous uh, paint goes, uh, with Vallejo I used to leave it for about an hour to dry before I did any chipping. Uh, with this Aquarius, as soon as I cleaned out the airbrush, I was straight in there and uh, I was really impressed with, with, with how it, uh, it chipped. However, the, the, it does come off a lot easier, um, so you do have to be that little bit more careful with it. But I was really impressed with uh, the results that I got. Now with this panel, as you can see, I'm using the circular motion because here I want to try and create some uh, larger chipping. Two of the uh, side panels have the um, camouflage pattern of the actual uh, Jag itself. Uh, this particular one was just all Dunkle Girl, just to sort of break, break it up and, uh, and add a bit of character to it. Try and uh, roughen up all of the edges. How much chipping you want to do, that's entirely up to you based on your own um, uh, look for the tank that you want and also based on any reference material that you've been looking at as well I've got to admit this build was turning into more of a, a, a of a what if um, scenario rather than a, uh, a historical accurate uh, particular build uh, which is more fun for me I was certainly enjoying it as you can see here got a cocktail stick and just added in some more horizontal scratches So that was all the winter whitewash chipping done. So next we're going to move on to making the sheets. Now I was going to use milliput, um, but I do find that does break up quite easily when doing sheets. So I've uh, changed over to doing the green stuff. Um, so just cut off a slice and then uh, making sure you've got some gloves on. Whatever you do, don't buy these ones. These are shocking gloves, <laughs> but I did change them later on. And blend the, the yellow and the blue in until it turns green, hence the name green stuff. Now this is very sticky stuff, uh, so I use talc uh, just to uh, take most of the stickiness off. Some people use Vaseline, this is entirely up to you. Now obviously I'm going for oblong sheets, so I rolled it out um, into a shape um, and then using the roller, it's a matter of uh, just continually rolling it out, getting it as thin as you possibly can, keep applying the flour, uh, flour keep applying the talc um, so that it doesn't uh, stick. To the rolling pin and then when you're, you're as you're rolling out you'll get to a stage where the uh, green stuff will start to uh, fold and crease and at that point you need to stop and what you'll do is then start to uh, cut out the shapes that, that, that you actually require now for me I'm using the uh, PE bending tool and uh, just want to make some uh, sheet sizes uh, that will fit onto the uh, sides and the front of the jag and as you can see there it's still a bit too thick we really want this to be super thin so we'll add on some more talc and we'll get that rolling pin in there and we'll stretch it out and thin it out even more and then eventually what will happen is that you'll get to a stage where it's tissue thin but it doesn't break as you can see you can stretch it a bit and it's still okay and that's the state that you want it to uh, get to. If that was milliput, that would all be falling apart right now. So now that I was happy with the thinness, it was a matter of designing uh, where I wanted the sheets to go. Um, it would have a large one on the front and uh, some on the side. So I started to uh, cut out little sections and then very carefully putting the first section in place on top of the uh, jag. It was a matter of uh, getting a um, brush and some water taking off the talc and starting to create a, a, a simple shape it's not actually going to stick to the tank at this stage 
uh, but you can certainly start getting all your folds and your creases in place. Now you can use sculpting tools, um, cocktail sticks, in, in this particular case I'm just using some uh, flat nosed tweezers and just let your imagination run wild uh, just add a bit of character a few rips and tears a few folds go on get in there get underneath that's it there you go so that's that fold done and then uh, it's just a matter of uh, doing some on the other side as well and just building up some uh, life uh, um, character to the um, to the sheets themselves we're really looking for the worn out uh, look on these particular sheets as though they've been there for several months so there we have it that's the first one done and then we added one down the uh, left hand side as well and then I put the one across the top. I was really pleased with how that, that was all turning out. As far as the side ones goes, I wanted to make those very ripped and torn and worn out. So I used the um, tweezers there to uh, give that particular look. And again, they were added in a similar way, two on each side. And I was really pleased with how that had all turned out. So I was going to use uh, the Vallejo acrylics, different shades of white, uh, just to add some uh, depth and character to them. However, the majority of the um, um, colouring would be done uh, with the oils laid on. So this was just really a base coat. Uh, with all builds, uh, there's little mistakes here and there. Uh, I didn't realise there were some injector marks on the spare tracks. Uh, so they had some filler added, sanded back, and then uh, they all had to be repainted. I don't know how well you can see this but if you look at the exhaust on the right hand side I've added two little discs in there because there was a gap between uh, the bracket and the actual body itself and again they were primed and painted but pleased with how they all turned out. So there we have it that's all the acrylic work um, that's all the um, green stuff done um, and now it's all ready uh, to be weathered so the whole of this uh, little model has now been uh, covered in matte varnish so i'll just uh, give you a final quick look around and that will give me the opportunity to say thank you very much for looking in uh, hope you've enjoyed this video i'm really having a lot of fun with this build i'd like to say a big thank you to all of my subscribers uh, appreciate all your continued support of my work and in the meantime happy modeling